Welcome to the Nonaboss Audits and Investigations. And thank you for joining me for another episode of the Scientology Chronicles. So let's jump right into it. This document is dated February 7th, 1963. A call was received recently at Miami resident station from a Mr. Kermit Miller, Hollywood, Florida, in relation to the subject individual's operations. Mr. Miller said that he had been working for years with the FBI and the AMA to break up the Scientology cult. He said that he had a personal ax to grind in that his children had been taken away to Hawaii by a friend of his divorced wife and indoctrinated into Scientology. Mr. Miller complimented the Food and Drug Administration on the recent seizure of the Hubbard electrometer, the Hubbard e-meter, and various pieces of literature in the Washington, D.C. area. He volunteered the information that two local chapters of cancer cells of the cult, as he called them, are as follows. Number one, private resident at Southwest 7th Street in Miami, Florida, operator unknown at present, was formerly headed by Mr. Jim Watson. Number two, personal residence of Mrs. Evelyn Hacker of Northeast Fourth Court in Miami, Florida. She is reportedly an auditor in the organization. Mr. Miller said that he heard through a confidential source that Hubbard sent out an alert to all chapters of his organization immediately following the seizure. He also said that once the Washington seizure is adjudicated, he would be willing to help if multiple seizures are contemplated. We have a second document that I found, which mentions Mr. Miller, and we're going to take a look at that one now. And this document is dated May 28th, 1963. So it's just a couple of months later. Refer to attached copy of assignment memorandum dated March 4th, 1963 from Bureau of Enforcement. In connection with this assignment, a number of informal contacts has been made by this inspector with a Mr. Kermit Miller, Hollywood, Florida. Mr. Miller has indicated that he has copies of at least documents from the founding church of Scientology loaned out to other government agencies, which might be of benefit to us. He has constantly promised to recover these documents and have certified copies made for this inspector. To this date, Mr. Miller has not produced these documents. When they are received, they will be submitted. The following is a summary of a fragmentary bits of information gathered through these various informal discussions with Mr. Miller for whatever value it may be. First, Mr. Miller is a white male Marine Corps veteran about 45 years of age. He served in various responsible positions, including that of a sergeant major in the Marine Corps and appears to be above average intelligence. Mr. Miller says that he lost his wife and three children through divorce as a result of his wife's becoming infatuated with Scientology. 
Mr. Miller's mother-in-law, Mrs. Evelyn Hacker, was and supposedly still is operating a Scientology chapter at her home at Northeast Fourth Court, Miami, Florida. Two men, namely Vern Johnson and Jim Watson, were also associated with the operation of this chapter. Mr. Miller said that his wife became more and more involved in the Scientology and event and eventually and eventually dragged their three children into it. He said that he himself attended one meeting out of curiosity to see what was going on and he was appalled by what he saw. He said that he was given a test on the e-meter and told that it would cost him $4,000 to be cleared. Mr. Miller said he signed some sort of contract. This is one of the documents that he has promised to produce. In the ensuing months, Mr. Miller and his wife became quite distant to each other as a result of her infatuation over Scientology. As a result, he eventually sued her for divorce, which was granted in a Miami, Florida court. Custody of the three children, however, was awarded to the wife due to Mr. Miller's business failure. He said the judge told him he would have given him the children had he had enough money to support them. Subsequently, the wife, according to Miller, ran away with the children to Hawaii with Jim Watson who formerly assisted in the running of the above-mentioned Scientology chapter. He said, at the best of his knowledge, they are still there. This, he said, is in violation to the court order prohibiting removal of the children from Dade County, Florida. Mr. Miller has talked to the Federal Bureau of Investigation, the American Medical Association, the Florida Bureau of Narcotics, the Dade County Medical Society, and various organizations in an attempt to secure a thorough investigation of Scientology. At the present time, he is writing a book, which he plans to publish soon, exposing the fallacies of the Scientology chapters, which he refers to as, quote unquote, cancer cells. He recently held a two-hour discussion with Oliver Fields of the American Medical Association. He also assures the inspector that Mr. John Hanai, Administrative Director, Dade County Medical Association in Miami, Florida, has promised to aid him in his fight. He said that Mr. Hanai has sent out an alert to all doctors in the Dade County, Florida area to report any persons they come in contact with who are associated with Scientology and especially any diabetics. The part about diabetics results from an informal complaint to Mr. Hanai that a diabetic was taken off of insulin by a Mr. Carl Miller, who is said was taken off of insulin by a Mr. Carl Miller, who is said by Hanai and Miller to hold Scientology meetings in his private home. In addition to the above-mentioned individual, Mr. Miller says that Scientology meetings are still being held at two other locations in the Miami area. These are as follows. One, at Southwest 11th Street. Mr. Miller does not know who operates this establishment. However, he says that he has heard a rumor that a red-headed individual called Red Thornton has some sort of connection with this chapter. He said he has heard that this individual was taking some sort of drug to immunize himself against radiation and possibly had given it to other members. Mr. Miller says he described this drug to Oliver Fields of the AMA and was told that it was probably lysergic acid. This is a very dangerous drug. This inspector drove by the above-mentioned address and noted a bright red-headed individual walking across the front lawn along with a gray-haired gentleman appearing in his 50s. Directly in front of the two-story white frame house on the lawn is a sign mounted on a post which says, Scientology Florida Headquarters. 
Number two, at Northeast Fourth Court, this chapter is still supposedly operated by Evelyn Hacker, who is Miller's mother-in-law. On May 13th, 1963, this inspector accompanied Kermit Miller on an interview of Mr. Sandy Smith. On May 13th, 1963, this inspector accompanied Mr. Kermit Miller on an interview of Mr. Sandy Smith, who is employed at Bertram Yacht Basin. This individual, according to Mr. Miller, had also lost his wife as a result of Scientology while he was living at Pompano Beach, Florida. Mr. Smith related that at the time, which was about the middle of 1960, he was living with his cousin, Alan Smith. He said the meeting he said the meetings were held in that home and the person in charge was a Mrs. Elizabeth DeHalt. He does not know her address. According to Mr. Smith, this chapter now holds its meetings somewhere in Hollywood, Florida. Mr. Smith says that he only attended one Friday night meeting. He remembers some discussion about an arc triangle. He said he spent $10 on he and his wife. However, he said that his wife attended all of the meetings regularly and became quite involved. He feels that some sort of hypnosis is involved and says that e-meters definitely were used, although he never actually saw one. Mr. Smith said that his wife underwent a wholesale change of personality. Formerly, she had been dependent upon him for everything, and once she became hypnotized by Scientology, she lost all use for him. Subsequently, they were divorced. Mr. Smith says that Scientology definitely was the cause of the divorce. Any further information which this inspector encounters will be submitted regarding the above-mentioned individuals. So here we are, hearing another encounter another story of two individuals who lost their wives. Their families were broken again. I, Scientology stole Mr. Miller's children. The kids were taken to Hawaii. He had no idea what happened to his children. All he knows is they were taken to Hawaii and they were indoctrinated into Scientology. And the more and more of these documents that I continue to read, it is story after story after story. But I will say, this story in particular bothered me. Here was a man that had served his country. He was reaching out to every branch that he could think of for help and yet found none. Let me know what you think in the comments about Mr. Miller and Mr. Smith and their stories. And as always, no more kids in Scientology. Kids can't consent. And remember to spread love and kindness wherever you go. And I'll see you on the next one.